The following program is a public access production. Comcast is required to provide time on this channel and make it available, pursuant to franchise agreements with the communities we serve. Comcast is not affiliated with the following program or the producers of public access programming and is not responsible for the content. The following program does not reflect the opinions of Comcast or its affiliates. Greetings to you. It's me, Pastor Jay, reminding you one more time. Why do I have this pencil in my mouth? To realize that you are a unique, unrepeatable creation in the universe. There's no one else just like you. When you were made, created, you were the only one that was in that mold. Hey, glad to see you. Glad to be here. I, I am continuing in the series of uh, shows using scriptorial references because there have been six people, we'll count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, who said to, six, see six, six, people who have told me that they would like to hear me use scriptural references. I don't know whether they were seeing if I know what they were because I use a lot of quotes but I never tell people where they're from because I don't want to turn people off. I want people to be encouraged about the show, not be discouraged or feel that they've been talked, preached to, or that uh, they just can't have a conversation without me bringing up a scripture. But because these are faithful viewers, thank you so much, I am taking the opportunity to quote some scriptures when I refer to some points. I believe, and I've read, and I've heard that anything good that is going to happen in our lives today start with getting our minds on what we have. Start with getting our mind on what we have. Attitude of gratitude. Instead of moaning, groaning, complaining about what we do not have, to show appreciation for what you have enables you to get something else that you want in your life. For instance, your children, we give to our children whether they deserve it or not, whether they ask for it or not, but because we know that we are their parents, we want them to have the best that we can provide. So therefore, without them asking, we give them a new pair of shoes, we give them a decorated uh, room, we give them things that they don't even think about. And then when they ask for something, most of us try to get what they want. And when they said, thank you, I appreciate that. Oh, wow, what, what a wonderful mother parent we have. It is something that thrills our heart and we want to do more when we cook for them and they enjoy what we're cooking, say, oh, I'd be glad when we have that again, or I'm glad that we had that, or you're just such a wonderful cook. It just thrills our hearts, and especially a woman, a mother. My children write me cards now of thank you, saying thank you for everything that you have done, you did, you taught me. And it's interesting, sometimes they tell me that they do A, B, C, and D, because I taught them that and they appreciate it. My son told me that when he wears light color clothes, because he's about the color I am, he always wears dark or black underwear because I taught him if he's his color not to wear white under a light color because you see the print. I don't even remember telling him that, but he appreciates that. My daughter uh, wrote 
a card and said, thank you for not telling, saying I told you so in a certain situation because I told her what was going to happen, but I supported her in that situation. And once she was in college, she wrote me a letter and said, thank you for never saying I told you so. That's parenting. We do what we have to do. But it feels good for you to hear that you are appreciated. So the father likes to hear you say you appreciate where you are in life and not moan or groan about what you don't have. Today we're going to think back, not think backwards. Today's show is thinking back, but not thinking backwards. Thinking back means to think of all the things that you have acquired in your life, not the material things. You've acquired the ability to say please and thank you. You've acquired the ability to know how to pray. You've acquired the ability of being able to smile at others. You've acquired the ability to know how to walk with your head up, even in the midst of a hellish situation. You've acquired a lot of things, characteristics, attitudes that have brought you thus far. And sometimes it's just good to make a list of the intangibles that you have learned, that you've acquired, that you use now, that have got you from where you started to where you are now. You may not, most of us do not have everything that we want, but let's show appreciation for what we have. It says in Philippians 4th chapter, verses 6 through 7, to focus on thanksgiving. When you focus on thanksgiving, you start every prayer by thanking God where you are, what you've done, what he's done, what he's given you, what he's brought to you, that you have the opportunity to serve him, that you've been able to help somebody else. In Philippians 4th chapter, verses 6 through 7, it, it, if, when you read that, it's supposed to create a, a faith energy in you. When you re reflect on the specificity, the sp particular things that God has brought you through, he's brought you through to bring you to, to prepare you for. Say it again, Pastor Jude, okay. He brought you through all of that mess, all of that job, to this point, to this point, to take you to wherever the next point is for you to go to, but to say thank you to him. Our Heavenly Father heart is, is overjoyed by hearing us say thank you, I appreciate it. You brought me through seen and unseen dangers. You know, in the church we had the saints used to pray. You brought me through say, uh, uh, seen and unseen dangers. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. I said, that is so stupid. What do you mean you've been better to me than I've been to myself? You, all you have to do when something seems stupid to you <laughs> is just keep on living because it will play itself out and you will begin to understand. I've, you've been better to me, God, than I've been to myself. You've been better to me than I've been to myself because I would not have been lying. I would not have started smoking. I would not have started drinking. I would not have gotten on drugs. I would not have been promiscuous. I would have been more in your word. All of those things. He kept us even while we were doing those crazy things in our growing up years. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. I thought that was ridiculous, but now, at the age I am now, I realize, well, it wasn't just this year, other years I realized what that means. I would not have done certain things if I would have thought better of myself, known better of myself, knew that I did not have to be like anybody else, that uh, because be grateful for where I am because somebody else wanted to be where I was. You brought me a long way. So Philippians is a faith energy verse. It is a, which as you reflect on what the Father has done, what he has done for you, 
that you are grateful for, that you are happy about, that you get joy when you think about what he's done for you. It's not always the material. I'm telling you, it is just the internal knowing that without him, you would not be where you are now. You didn't go left because the spirit told you to go right. Over on the left was somebody who was doing a drive-by. Somebody was doing this stealing of the cars that they do. And the Lord protected you. Your car broke down and didn't start a certain time. It prevented you from running into a traffic, uh, to an accident. Yes, he's brought you through seen and unseen dangers. That's what Philippians fourth chapter, verses six through seven. When you read that, it is supposed to kickstart your faith. Also, it's good to just meditate, just, just sit <laughs> and be quiet and think of his goodness to you. Think, think of all the things that he's brought you through. Think of all the things that you could have been involved in, that other people got caught up in, that other people got messed up with, that you did not have to go through. That little childhood song says, count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your many blessings. <laughs> See what God has done. All right, you all started this telling me to use, uh, start using some scriptures. In Philippians, the sixth verse, it talks about the blessing. It talks about appreciating. It talks about the more you do that, the more you're going to get. The more you do that, really, you get so full, you really don't think about needing anything else. You count your blessings. You're just happy just for one more day just to be able to say thank you. One more day just to say I appreciate, as older people used to say, to say much obliged to you. I tell you, it is something to get through and give and have and use an opportunity to think back, to reflect where you come from, instead of backwards thinking. Backwards thinkers does a whole lot of woulda, put shoulda, on. Another thing that thinking back, reflecting back does for you. You know, all of us, I believe, have that tendency to start comparing who we are, what we are, to somebody else. Don't you? Don't you? Come on, tell the truth. I used to have it here in the South. Tell the truth and stay in church. But in 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, 12th verse, the Father told us, well, and, and what well, Paul told us, we are not to compare ourselves with others. And I say, when you start comparing yourself with others and wish you had or wish you were that person, that means that you don't appreciate who you are. You have not discovered how great you are. Sure, we look at the people on the red carpet. We look at the people in the mansions. We look at the people who are very successful, flying their own jets. And for a moment, for a moment, we might say, oh, I wish, I wonder how, how can I, if only I. But then you'll come back to your same self and say, God, I thank you for where I am because it could be worse. I thank you for the way I think because it could, I could have gotten up this morning. Oh, Lord have mercy. And put my shoes on my head because my mind was not clear. I could have gotten up this morning and wouldn't have been able to move a limb. But right now I say thank you for what you have done in my life not comparing myself to anybody else. When you start comparing yourself, wishing that you had, wishing that you were, wishing that you could be, all it causes is misunderstanding. It causes confusion. It sets you up for jealousy. But when you sit 
stop back and think of all that you've done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah, thank God for saving me. Remember, you all messed up when you told me you wanted me to start quoting some scriptures because when I think about where he brought me from, when I think about what he's brought me through, when I think about where I could have been, I can't do anything but say thank you, thank you, thank you. And he appreciates, he who God appreciates his child saying thank you. Let's get on another point. Another point is to develop selected memory. All of us have been through mess. All of us have been through stuff that have could turn us around, away from serving the Lord. We need to have selective memory. Things are going to come up in your mind that happened to you. The abuse you received, the neglect that you received, the lack that you had to have in your life, the lies that were told on you, about you. But it's time to have selective memory. Life is too short to keep on dwelling on the negativity that's in society. I have a folder when things get too negative for me and I can't seem to shake them. It is my encouragement folder. And I've said that on the show before and I've told that to some other people. When it get to the point that I just can't bring myself to realize how blessed I am, I read my thank you letters from people who have written to me for whatever reason. And it brings me out of that state of woe is me. I wish, I woulda, I coulda, because we all can go there. And when you think about all you have done, all the lives you have touched, all the sacrifice you have made for the good of others, and you see them progressing, when you see them moving ahead, it is something that thrills your soul to say, I help that person to get from point A to point B. You don't have to tell everybody. You don't have to tell anybody because you know what you did and more importantly, the Father knows what you did. You just went, there's a song that said, if I could just help somebody, then my living will not be in vain. You feeling depressed? You feeling down? You feeling woe is me? The quickest way to get out of that feeling of that like that is for you to go out and help somebody else. Do something good for somebody else. During the holidays, so many times people are feeling sad, depressed, lonely. The highest uh, incident of suicide are during the Christmas holiday season. And people are taking their lives because they're feeling so sad about themselves. If they were good out and volunteer to work for someone else, to serve in a soup kitchen, to serve a meal, to clean the house, to develop, um, to, uh, to uh, sit, uh, take a meal to someone, to play a game with someone who has no one else. It takes you out of your sorrowful, pitiful state into a state of if I can just help somebody then my living will not be in vain. I told you about the trap of comparison. I told you about being selective in your ministry, uh, memory. And now I want to tell you, expect God to make up whatever you have lost. I, one of my favorite scriptures, I have a lot of it, it says over in Mark, 10th chapter, around the 29th verse, anything you have given up, lost, for the sake of the gospel and God, he will give it back to you 100 fold in this lifetime. With persecution, a lot of us say we got the persecution, but I will give it back to you 100 fold. So those of us who expected to have a full 501, I'm sorry, a IRA, a full retirement package, a full savings, and things went by the wayside. You lost financially. 
you say, like I have said, I never expected to be at this point in my life. This living in these circumstances, I expected to be living in a mansion by now, I just have to tell you, and traveling like I wanted to travel because I was well on my way. But I started using what I was saving for my retirement for the good of the Lord. I've taken positions where people were supposed to pay me and didn't, but I stayed there because I felt that's what the Lord wanted me to do. I took out my savings. I cashed my stocks. I reduced my cushion in order to make sure that somebody else received the word of the Lord. And the Bible tells me over in Joel that I will give to you everything that you have lost for the gospel. And I hold on to that. If you see me, you will know that I have do not miss a meal. So I'm not thoroughly, I'm not a skinny person. I am a uh, well-endowed female. I'm not fat, I'm just cute, I'm just fine. That's all it is, I just have to tell, it to tell you like it is. But I'm not lacking for anything. I'm not staying outdoors. I'm not lacking for anything. I have clothes to wear. I have food to eat. I have shelter. I have a, a one or two people who care about me and I care about them. So therefore, I am grateful. I do not have to compare myself to somebody else and you don't either. I know how to develop a selective memory. That's what I want you to do. And then expect God to keep his word. If nobody else keeps their word, and it may not be like you think. It may not be when you think. But if he said it, that's it. But think about it. You've got to know what he said. He told me a long time ago before I started preaching the gospel. Over in Joshua, first chapter, eighth verse. And I remember it now as if it was just today that he said it. It said, have I not told you, don't be discouraged, don't worry, for lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the earth. Sure, I get down sometimes. Sure, I would like things to be different sometimes. But seems like every time I do, I read something with that scripture. Someone tells me that scripture. I may be listening to a radio pro with that scripture. I pick up something, a track, a leaflet, a book that has that scripture. And that's his way of letting me know, lo, <laughs> Sandra, I am with you even until the end of the world. I am taking care of you. You are lacking no good thing. So it's good to reflect. If you need to get you an encouragement folder like I do when someone sends you a card that's uplifting, when you do something for someone else that made you feel good, when you receive a thank you from someone, when you get anything of encouragement, when you read something that gave you an inspiration, another step forward to, for you to just move just a little further along your way, then put that into your encouragement folder. When you make a list of the things that you have been through, not the, the bad part, but what God brought you to. You may have been through a storm, but out of that, you became a stronger person of faith. You became energized. You became interested in a certain topic, and you researched it, and you feel good about knowing it. Is, is now for us to think back, but not think backward. If we ever needed encouragement before, we need it now. It tells us in 2 Corinthians, I said it before, 10 and 12, do not compare yourself with others because you, I'm saying, I'm saying this, don't know what that person had to go through to get to where they are. And my shoes are the right size for me. Your shoes are are the right size for you. You may wear a size seven, I may wear a size seven, but the way your shoes fit you 
will not fit me that way. My point is my trials, my tribulations, my problems are designed for me. I cannot go through your problems, your tribulations. I cannot handle your sorrows. They don't fit me well. They only fit you. And they fit you because God knows the end before he knows your beginning. And he knew you were going to finish the course. You were going to finish the race. And you would not have to take an energy booster. You would not have to take an illegal substance to finish it. You would hold on to God's unchanging hand. Joel says, I will restore to you everything. He used the word canker worm. That is something that eats up everything that you have. Takes care, that gets rid of everything that you put down. He said, I'm going to restore it to you. He said in Mark 10, that everything you have given up, I mean a house, a cousin, a sister, a spouse, a brother, a mother, father, pension plan, retirement plan, houses, cars, a figure to have those children, you have given it up in the name of Jesus the Christ. He said, I give it back to you not by and by, but in this lifetime, not one to one, but 100 fold, you cannot be God's given. <laughs> no matter how hard you try, you may not understand it. You may not even want to go through it, but God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we ever ask or think according to the spirit, the power that works within you. That's in Ephesians, the second chapter. Yes, he is the one who helps you to move forward even while you're looking back. And you're looking back to say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And so it is. So with that, I say, remember, it is better to be an original of yourself than a copy of somebody else. Why? Because I can only handle the trials, tribulations, problems, pains, situations that are designed for me. I cannot handle your problems and you cannot handle mine. All we can do is be able to encourage somebody if I can help somebody then my living will not be in vain. Let's think back. Let's reflect. But let's not look backwards. See you next time. Until then, reflect. Write down the good things that you have accomplished that have occurred for you. Fix you an encouragement folder. Do not compare yourself to anyone else. Read these scriptures so that you would have that energy, increased faith, to keep on being the unique person that you are. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.